so another before lunch session and uh, since morning we have discussed iot uh, internet of things and one of the main enabling technology which is promising in this field is zigbee zigbee is basically a wireless pan standard personal area network standard it is characterized by uh, low cost sensors very uh, low latency devices with less power required uh, these were the basically design drivers on which zigbee was uh, thought of and it is based on the 802.15.4 which was basically a ieee standard for low rate wireless personal area networks now uh, basically since morning i am trying to get you a prize with the panorama of the technology development so uh, i also discussed that uh, bluetooth wifi wimax because that will give you a uh, sure shot idea of how technologies come up so uh, usually uh, as i told in the morning that uh, ieee or itu or some other standards agency come up with certain radio specification depending on the availability of those radio and the design drivers once those are framed usually the technology vouchers who want who want the, to develop certain technology the companies which are in the business who want to look at the future they form some sort of consortia or uh, a interaction group and over the time they develop middleware standards for their protocol thereby lot of involving lot of industries from around the globe this enables them to have a vision to have interoperable future to have a uh, a technology which is uh, mature enough and has lot of uh, commercial interest from lot of sides thereby in ensuring that the technology has a long life cycle wherein their investments if they do so are fulfilled and they get a break even they make money out of it so similar pattern is available in all wireless technology streams whether it is wifi wifi it is wifi alliance zigbee it is zigbee alliance bluetooth it is bluetooth sig then they come up with certain trademark they come with uh, come up with certain intellectual property which is available free of cost to all the members of that particular group and they there are certain type of certifications for the product from this sig or alliance which ensure that the products are interoperable the products follow a certain standard the various vendors or in companies which are involved in all this development or are members of that group they develop commercial products based on this stack and their commercial products are unique in a sense at the same time interoperable with other products so this is how the industry ensures that the money they invest in a technology has a sufficient lifetime so that their actual investments if they do so are fortified so uh, similarly zigbee has come up on the 802.15.4 so we will discuss the architecture implementation and applications this presentation i am presenting is a basic presentation you will get get the entire idea of zigbee and if you want to pursue it further then you have zigbeealliance.org website which will give you the latest state of the art and uh, even uh, you can have certain tutorials online wherein you can have a real feel of the zigbee modules uh, there is one company called next which is right now very prominent in this field uh, previously there was genic there was one company called genic which has been acquired by this next uh, right now so they are coming up with kits for development and all those things with end nodes routers all those things now what is zigbee how the name come actually so it is an established set of specifications for low rate wireless personal area networks it is a technological standard which has been created for control and sensor networks it is based on ieee 802.15.1 created by zigbee alliance which extends the upper layers of the stack not defined by 802.15.4 ieee defined only the physical layer and mac layer the upper layers which acts as a interface between these physical and mac layer and the application layer are defined by the zigbee alliance now what is zigbee alliance i am again and again saying that it is basically an independent neutral non profit corporation 
which was formed by the industry to work in this technology. It is open and global. Even you can join. You can become a member of Zigbee Alliance. They will send you mailers of the latest updates as well as wherever conferences are organized. And you are able to use that protocol which they have developed with due credits to them. So over 400 companies uh, right now. This data is a bit old. There are more than 400. Membership is global, and the activities include. You see the activities. Open standards for wireless sensors and controls based on 15.4. Product certification and compliance programs. They certify the product. You can have a Zigbee logo product or Zigbee enabled product. Two types of certification they provide. And then branding, market development, and user education. Naturally, when the user is educated, then only a product succeeds. So Zigbee is a key enabler for IoT. Initially, it was more into WS and business, but with the rush for IoT, it has become a prominent player in this particular field. Now, this is how Zigbee uh, seems or thinks to enable the Internet of Things. You have Zigbee enabled devices at your home. Then you have Zigbee enabled digital smart cities. You have uh, Zigbee enabled M commerce services and then telecom services. They all are integrated through uh, and you have access through the mobile phones. So in that manner, you are able to control each and everything over VoIP or over 6LO WPAN. There is one protocol which provides an interface between the Zigbee coordinator and the internet. So in that manner, this is the complete panorama of the internet of things which Zigbee aspires to cater. These are various members of the Zigbee Alliance. Now, the first thing is how this name came in. Like for instance, Bluetooth, you know how it is named? It is named after Henry Blatton. He was a king who integrated all the Baltic nations, Scandinavia and all those things. So he was a king who integrated all those four countries. So to highlight his integration of that region, after Blatton, it was called Bluetooth. Bla is blue in their local language. Similarly, Zigbee is basically named for erratic zigzagging pattern of bees between flowers. The way bee hovers around the flower for uh, extracting the nectar, on that basis, since Zigbee has one of the major protocol, uh, major topology which is supports is mesh. So to highlight that particular thing, Zigbee is named so. It symbolizes communication between nodes in a mesh network. And again, the network components of Zigbee are alike the uh, bees. You have a queen bee, which we call coordinator. You have drones, who are basically supervisors, or we call routers. And then you have the worker bees or end nodes. So naturally, queen bee has the largest capabilities. Drones have some capabilities lesser or more than is equal to the queen bee, and then. Your worker bees or end nodes who are limited in capabilities, but naturally the costing of them also is on the inversely is also inversely proportion. Now the first question, uh, which arises, is that why do we need another wireless pan standard? Bluetooth is already existing, but why we need it? Because Bluetooth was more into ad hoc networks. Bluetooth was based on PicoNet structure, wherein at a time you can have maximum eight devices active in a network and up to 256 Park network, Park devices. But here you have an addressing scheme wherein you can accommodate up to 66, 65,000 devices in a single network. So the objectives for having another WPAN standard was to increase the power consumption, then the production cost to decrease the production cost, development cost, and then the bit error rate. Because in case of sensors, although the data is lean, but error rate should also be low. So if you see this diagram, this is basically uh, SNR ratio of various technologies. And uh, Zigbee relies upon 802.15.4 which has excellent performance in the low SNR environments, low signal to noise ratio environments. 
Zigbee is the best. Then we had to increase the sensitivity of the systems was another design driver. To increase the flexibility means the number of supporting nodes in Zigbee you have a mesh with uh, a addressing scheme which supports up to 65,000 devices. Whereas in Bluetooth you have maximum 7 devices in a PicoNet. Security that is always debatable. If I am talking about Zigbee, I will say Zigbee is better. If I am talking about Bluetooth, there is always a trade off in the security. However, uh, Bluetooth uses uh, uh, advanced encryption standard, whereas Bluetooth is based on safer side. Range uh, now, uh, this, uh, this, this uh, discussion is basically we are discussing in the context of why we needed Zigbee. As on date, as I told you, that Bluetooth has inculcated into itself a lot of things. It is trying to enter into the domain of Wi Fi as well as in the domain of low energy protocols like Zigbee. So in that manner, they have adopted a lot of things from there also. But as a design driver, we are discussing the design driver right now. So uh, uh, initially, the Zigbee was thought of having a uh, range of up to 75 meter in line of sight condition, whereas Bluetooth uh, had around 10 meter range with the original protocol. Right now, it is it is catering to the Wi-Fi domain, so it has a larger range also. But that is not with the original Bluetooth radio. That is with some additional hardware which is not compliant with 802.15.1. Various usage scenarios as we have discussed in terms of IoT, same applies out here. Industrial and commercial, consumer electronics, then you have toys and games, then you have PCs and peripherals. When I was studying, we used to hear that there will be time when you can put your uh, CPU in one Almira and have all things wirelessly connected. This is happening today. That is now a normal either with a Bluetooth radio or whatever. Then personal health care is a very promising domain uh, with those health bands and all those things with non-invasive sensing techniques for blood sugar and all those things. A lot is happening. Then home and building automation that uh, it has become a commercial gimmick these days. You might be seeing that uh, ad of Godrej consumer products and husband and wife are fighting who will go to home first. I've seen that ad. So the husband and wife are fighting who will go home first just because whosoever goes to home first will start the AC and the home will be cooler when the other one reaches there. So but with these type of technologies, your mobile is a controller, you can start your air conditioning or even you can have a profile for your house because everything is smart then your lighting is smart your sprinkler system is smart your TV is smart you can control everything from your app in the mobile phone the moment you enter the house your TV channel is your favorite one your uh, geyser temperature is your adaptive one your uh, everything is as per your wishes just through a single click in the app of a profile which is basically a composite of all your preferences and the coordinator at your home which is connected to the internet will implement that particular profile on all individual sensors just everything you can imagine for wireless sensor nodes or in general short range communications 2.4 gigahertz because it is free in India, it's 2.4 giga. There are certain frequencies which are available. We will discuss uh, in Europe. There are there is uh, uh, one 868 megas available, and uh, in US also there are certain frequencies. I will detail out. Now, uh, this 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 was the original protocol stack, and this I have con I am continuing to keep because right now the Zigbee stack is a bit different. But this I am because this gives an excellent understandability to students. You have Mac and physical layers at the bottom. These are the three frequencies 868 mega, 915, but these are the prized catch in our country. 915 GSM is operating. So these are not available here, but they are available in America because America works on 1800 mega. CDM in India may fail, they are more or less nahi chala technology. Wo US wagera mein wo si frequency pe kaam karte mostly. Chalta hai. Uh, but 915 वहाँ नहीं चलता है, ठीक है? 
then uh, you have 2.4 gigahertz which is the ism band which is globally available uh, but since it has uh, it is called industrial scientific and medicinal band now the middle layers the network layer the security and the application programming interfaces are developed by the zigbee alliance and at the top you have the applications here i have written customer it is actually vendor or the person who is bringing out the commercial product based on this particular protocol so they develop customized application the zigbee alliance also comes up with specific application profile there is zigbee smart home 3.0 usmes there are specific application even applications available for installing a smart home capabilities wherein you will have all the devices with sensor enabled and you will have a coordinator with that profile uploaded you can control everything now uh, before moving further in zigbee let have let's have a small walk through through our more or less i have told you what the basic design drivers which were wind 802.15.4 were that there will be thousands of sensors in a small space so naturally they need to be wireless otherwise they will become unmanageable secondly the sensors are frequently stand alone so they should have low power requirement and finally they are frequently isolated so the range should be moderate keeping in these view these challenges the standards committee came up with a protocol which has these certain general characteristics data rates of 250 kbps 40 kbps and 20 kbps star or peer to peer operation zigbee we are talking about mesh support for low latency devices which can sleep fast and wake up fast fully handshaked protocol for transfer reliability so you have certain acknowledgement mechanism all those things then low power consumption and then there were three frequency bands of operation 16 channels in 2.4 gigahertz ism band they were available globally 10 channels in 915 megahertz ism band which is available in us americas and one channel in the european 868 megahertz band recently china has opened up certain newer frequencies also for this purpose so the basic architecture uh, had two radios at the physical layer one that supported 868 or 915 megahertz uh, band and one that supported the 2400 megahertz band these are the various channels with a band gap of 2 and 5 megahertz now as in the osi model as we discussed in the osi model naturally uh, the psdu was having uh, is having 12 uh, 127 octets you have a physical adder which is basically meant for the physical adder at the destination machine then a start of packet delimiter as well as a preamble for synchronization purposes then at the mac layer the basic tasks were as with the osi model channel acquisition management frame security and naturally error correction so uh, these were the design drivers i discussed in the first slide also low cost ease of implementation reliable data transfer short range operation and very low power consumption so simple but a flexible protocol then uh, at the mac layer there are two four types of frames totally one is the data frame another is the beacon frame third is the acknowledgement frame and a mac command frame this we will discuss when we will discuss in totality the types of communication which happens over these channels data frame is nothing but actual data beacon frame is for uh, asynchronous communication mode wherein uh, after a certain time it sends a beacon on the channel acknowledgement frame is to acknowledge the receipt of the data and command frame is to for settings of the system now this is the basically uh, as we have discussed a lot since morning this is the 802 wireless space wherein uh, you see bluetooth you see wifi you see wimax you see futuristic standards like ieee 802.22 so here you see uh, then in the wifi space now you see the data rates 
for Wi-Fi, the typical data rates is between 10 to 100 Mbps. For uh, Bluetooth, the data rate is 0.1 to 1 Mbps. But there was a gap in the range wherein the data requirement was 0.01 to 0.1 Mbps. Means in the area where very lean data comes in. A sensor is triggered only when an event occurs. Or periodic events may be there that time at particular instances of time you are taking on the temperature readings, all those type of things. So the Zigbee frequencies, I think I have discussed already three frequencies. Anna? What does Zigbee do? This also I think we have discussed. It is designed for wireless controls and sensors, operates in PAN and device to device networks, connectivity between small packet devices, control of light, switches, thermostats and appliances. I will discuss the examples which will show how, th how things are easy with this type of systems. Now the basic architecture is that you have a 64 net bit long addressing wherein you have uh, around 66,000 devices, 27 channels over three bands, maximum data rate of 250 kbps. It is optimized for time critical applications and power management, full mesh networking support. Now there are two types of nodes basically. Uh, as far as Zigbee is concerned, there are three types of nodes. However, the standard 802.15.4 defines only two types of devices. One is full function device, second is reduced function device. In Zigbee, there are three types. One is the Zigbee coordinator. In a particular network, in a particular individual Zigbee network, there is only one coordinator. It initiates the network, stores information about the network, all the devices either directly or indirectly communicates with the Zigbee coordinator. It has the routing functionality and it acts as a bridge to other networks like IP. Then you have a Zigbee router. It is also called a full function device in 802.15.4. But In the Zigbee parlance, it is an optional component. There can be instances where you have only nodes and the directly coordinator. It is not a mandatory part of a network. But it is an optional component which helps you to extend the range of the network at times. Routes between nodes extends the network coverage and manages local allocation and deallocation of the child nodes which are associated with that particular router. Then the third is the Zigbee end device. It is the cheapest of all, have limited power capability, have limited processing capability. Mostly sensors are housed at Zigbee end devices. Optimized for low power consumption, cheapest, communicates only with the coordinator or router and sensors would be deployed out here. And in the IEEE parlance, it is called RFD, reduced function device. Now again, what type of data we can have in this scenario? One is that we have a periodic data collection. Secondly, data comes in intermittently at any particular time. And third is that data is repetitive. It comes repetitively. So uh, the various traffic modes which are optimum for your use case scenario depending on the traffic type are two. One is the beacon mode. Beacon mode is one in which whenever the periodic data is to be transmitted, a beacon is sent from the coordinator. Now the coordinator and end nodes are so synchronized that whenever this beacon comes in, it has a cooling off period. Within that cooling off period, all the sensors wake up or all the end nodes wake up. And then after the communication is done, they can all again go to sleep, thereby enabling lot of power saving. So coordinator and end device can go to sleep in this system or in this setup, even the coordinator can go to sleep. Because uh, really low power. Yeah, so the power in certain environments where 
you want even the coordinator to be battery operated or it is power star you can use this configuration but depends on the type of data which is generated it has the lowest energy communication uh, consumption but here the timing is very important whenever that weekend comes in in the weekend window it's not a basically a single shot it's a window within that weekend window all uh, all the sensor nodes should wake up otherwise they will miss the bus because after weekend there will be data transmission period and then every uh, then there will be certain synchronization information or information regarding the next weekend when it will come in and then finally everything will go to sleep how many devices can connect to the coordinator with 64 bit addressing you can have up to yeah now uh, this is a setup here you see initially a beacon comes in which is indicated by res then there is a cooling off period wherein no communication happens and it is expected that in this period everyone is wake up then you have a contention period wherein anyone using the csma ca approach can acquire the channel whosoever has the ready data with it carrier sends multiple ss collision avoidance and then for data which is periodic you can have guaranteed time slots ki bhai is time slot mein kewal yahi sensor apna data send karega and then at last you have another weekend which indicates that all of us can sleep now the data transmission is over and the next duration wherein the weekend will come in at the, uh, the the synchronous time at which you have to wake up again then another mode is non beacon mode Last weekend, we'll tell them when to wake up again. Hmm. Yeah. It 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 has it has the uh, information regarding next action. Or uh, there can be a setup wherein it is fixed at priority. Then when the next weekend will come in. But for that, the clock should be synchronized. That is critical. Timing of the clocks is very critical in that case. Send this weekend because they already know that they have to wake up at that time. Mm -hmm. Why do we need to send the first weekend? Because there are chances that uh, consider the case that net coordinator has gone down. Consider, for example, the coordinator is also battery operated, has gone down, or it has been compromised in some manner, and then. Yeah, that that will not be received, or that is uh, there is no receptor for it. Okay, but after sending the data, yeah, they are expecting that the beacon will come to indicate that things are done. We will sleep. But when they will not receive, they they can automatically send that the coordinator has been compromised or that is done. For that, there are certain security features also, no, which will have pertaining information in this regard. so the second is the non beacon non beacon mode here usually it is thought of that the coordinator is mains powered or the coordinator is always awake in that in this setting the coordinators oblique routers have to stay awake and uh, it can be a heterogeneous network wherein one part is net uh, very power starved the other part has sufficient power so whenever a fire sensor gets some information only then it will transmit otherwise there is no need ki there is no meaning that we transmit after every half an hour there is no fire you know so the power is asymmetric in this case here uh, whenever a network device has certain data it sends the channel if it is available it will send data over the channel and an optional acknowledgement mechanism can be there or can't be there it depends on your application and requirements now uh, this is something uh, topologies you might all know very well mesh and so here the basic difference between mesh and tree is that in mesh the routers are able to communicate between themselves routers at the same level are yeah routers at the same level are able to communicate with each other whereas in a tree topology routers at the hierarchical level can communicate 
here in this is the child router of this one okay B but these two are both are the child router of this router so by installing routers yeah can we increase that uh, to the power 64 number of nodes no no uh, routers will basically uh, divide that particular space for example uh, the coordinator will will have a 16 bit space within that 16 bit space we will further divide in between routers so as and when the hierarchy goes down means child routers have again child routers in that case the the the, the addressing space of the parent router will be divided among the child routers now in tree address that is that is available on with the nodes yeah is this physical address or virtual address address available with the nodes uh, is the physical address of the nodes this is the physical address that every uh, node should be having a unique address yeah that is why you need uh, 64 bits How many bits is that? Sixty-four bits. So that is we can't exceed the number of these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throughout the world. Yes. Only that much is the quantity that is available. But uh, with the short addressing scheme, you can have at every point you have two to the power sixteen options. Okay, but I'm I'm trying to say that we can have two to the power sixty-four more. Yeah. Right. Yes. Uh, can we have more than? that more than that you need another uh, then you have to extend the number of bits but within a network there are logical addressing naturally that is yeah is the logical address 64 bits or physical address short address is 16 bits long address is 64 bits short is 16 bits, 16 bits within a network That will be logical. Yeah. Now. Uh, that will be assigned by whom? Router or coordinator? Uh, depends. Uh, initially, the coordinator will start the network. That will assign uh, addresses to and bind, create binding tables for all those which are directly connected to it. Then within the network, every router will have a space. So then it will it will create its own bounding table. If if there is no router, then it will be naturally assigned by uh, the coordinator itself. That is held at the level. Uh, this is a good example of mesh networking. For example, uh, you have these control uh, and and devices which are connected with that particular switch. Now, in a mesh, if a particular route or uh, means uh, with uh, here we follow a ODB algorithm. ad hoc on demand vector algorithm. So that algorithm uh, finds the best short route. suppose a particular node goes down so in that case with mesh networking new route will be generated now the benefit is that right now between the switch and the the uh, uh, device you need physical wires but with zigbee or any wireless networking uh, system that physical wire requirement or the uh, things become lot safer because at the switch level you don't need mains power the mains power is only at the device level so the switches are far more safer right now there is a physical wiring between both of them if it, if a switch operates now this is uh, actually the stack wherein various things happen uh, the network layer is responsible for network organization route discovery and message relaying the application support layer is basically an interface between the network layer and the application layer the zigbee device object which you see spanning from application to the network layer is basically an application having endpoint address 0 so that performs the task like device management device discovery and service discovery and then uh, device binding and messaging is done at the application support layer security functions are performed by ssp layer this stack has been updated right now with the latest protocol latest stack it is quite different so this is the physical uh, details in the 24 megahertz band you have 4 bits per symbol 
uh, you follow the direct spread spread spectrum technique with 32 bit chips modulation is qpsk and sine half wave impulses are there in case of uh, these other frequencies the symbol is single bit these are various uh, physical layer or radio requirements then at the mac layer you have the channel access specification whether it is a beacon mode or non beacon mode super frame structure and slotted or unslotted carrier csmsea slotted is the uh, slotted is for implementing that gts mechanism and unslotted is whomsoever wants it can communicate then the mac layer also performs the task of managing the personal area network like channel scanning pan id conflict detection and resolution starting a pan sending beacons these all things are performed by the mac layer at the lower level transfer handling is also performed by the mac layer which includes weaker indication polling and then acknowledged and non acknowledged transmission gts management including allocation of link deallocation of gts slots the last is a frame security task to ensure that then you have a various available security modes out there now with mac layer you are up to a only a one hop distance the routes are not discovered or decided or binded at this level so beyond mac layer when you go to the network layer route discovery task is performed here only these are all connected with one hop distance because mac mac is not end to end that is only hop to hop now suppose these two new nodes joins to the router node 5 now how to how coordinator 0 can communicate with them here the network layer comes into picture so the various tasks which are performed by the network layer are distributed as address assignment so it is a either a tree structure or self managed by the higher layer 16 bit network space which we are talking about is divided among the child routers now the child routers further divide their space again for their children and the decision making is done on the basis of there are certain parameters for that they can be maximum child count per parent maximum child routers per parent and then maximum network depth for example suppose uh, the three criteria i have taken is 222 2. you can have maximum two child maximum two child routers and then network depth can be 2 so in this case if a new node comes in and wants to join four it would not be possible because already the depth is 2 and 4 has already two childs so in this case what will happen is that it cannot get connected and if it is in the vicinity of 1 then it can approach 1 for connection or it will be orphaned in that case if it is not in the vicinity of 1 it will be naturally orphaned then network layer also performs the root cost estimation and this is basically based on aodb what is the cost of reaching from one point to another and it will select which is the best so uh, the basic metric to compare goodness is link cost between the two neighbors so the total path cost will be sum of various link cost aodb is followed out here basically another task which network layer performs is root discovery wherein it finds the route between two nodes so that is also a standard that uh, it broadcast a root request package and then that root request packet comes back from the end node through a particular route the route from bit it comes at the lowest cost or fastest is selected as the final route here i shown it visually you know for example you want to find the route between two source and destination nodes 
so uh, the source node broadcast a root request package through various channels it reaches the destination now since this is the shortest route so it will come with the minimum hop counter and another parameter is the link cost if, uh, so the total uh, like part technique we have followed program evolution and review technique in that manner only the final root cost is decided and then on the basis of the best solution the root is fixed yeah yeah okay <laughs> then uh, routing tables are there at the router level also and as well as the coordinator level also. then uh, again routing task is obviously check if the routing table entry exists if yes initiate a route discovery if possible and hierarchical routing as a fallback and another task which is performed by the network layer is route maintenance that we have discussed in that pictorial example that if some some nodes go down in that case you have to find the you have to remove that route from your routing tables and then you have to find an alternative route for that so that includes orphaning procedure and reassociation re procedure is also important because there may be case that i replace the battery of if i find and the battery is replaced that node is again on then in that case can be real now at the top is the applica uh, at the top of the network layer is the application support layer and the application support layer acts as a bridge between the network layer and the actual application you can see the application identifier there is written endpoint address so on a single node up to 8 256 uh, 256 sensor can be housed with that 8 bit addressing scheme for that 0 is the zigbee device object address and 255 are free it acts as an interface to network layer binding and discovery tasks are performed this discovery is basically service discovery and at the top you have the application framework unique identifiers for application is endpoint addresses endpoint address 0 to 255 0 is reserved for zdo whereas 1 to 255 is available so in a single node you can run up to 256 applications which can have further sensors now uh, the application framework basically specifies the data types for communication now it's like a programming language you have in uh, you have variables then you have unions and structures which you can generate with the help of those variables which can be used so you have complex data types every device has a descriptor which is called the zigbee descriptor which has information regarding that particular descriptor like frequency band in which it operates its power description application flag serial number manufacturer and so on now what does this zigbee device object do it basically defines the role of devices within the network means whether it is a coordinator whether it is a router or whether it is a end node it initializes the application support layer network layer and security service specification so the first device within the network which opens up is the coordinator naturally it offers services like device oblique service discovery binding and security management and assembles information about the network for the zigbee router and zigbee coordinator now this part is uh, basically regarding the compliance as i told you that the zigbee alliance also provides the certification and services so within that certification services if at the top of the rpli 802.15.4 protocol stack you are is using a zigbee stack then your product is zigbee compliant you can use that your product is zigbee compliant but 
for that you have to use the zigbee stack and the application profile is developed by yourself that is not zigbee zigbee alliance specific whereas in case of a for example here you see there are two type of clusters these clusters are various variables for example this uh, switch has zero is off one is on two is seen one seen one can be anything morning so naturally in the morning the lights will be off ac will be off windows will be open this type of settings seen two can be evening so with that evening with a single control single remote you can control entire panorama then there is cluster 2 which is basically fan control fan off fan on temperature set and some other setting now here these things are defined by the individual vendor zigbee alliance has nothing to do with it but it is developed on the top of the zigbee stack so this particular product will be called a zigbee compliant product zigbee alliance provides compliance certification for certain devices wherein the manufacturer has developed his own specific profile however zigbee alliance also publishes lot of public profiles and if you develop something at the top of that public profile then your product can be a zigbee logo product you can have a zigbee logo on your product and you can write that this is a zigbee logo product what that means is that you are completely following that particular profile you are developing your application or customizing your application on the top of that profile so what does it ensures is that it application conforms to a specific public profile right now lot of profiles are available if you visit the zigbee alliance.org there is one website if you visit that website lot of public profiles are available and manufacturers or vendors are using those public profiles and when they develop product then they are called zigbee logo products this i think you can naturally visualize the application spaces for zigbee wireless control that simply works building automation personal health care industrial control home control pc per I, i think i have already discussed now these are the examples in a house you can have a light controller you can have a smoke detector motion detector window open close controller entertainment control and then you have a coordinator in between that coordinator will provide you with some sort of remote and wherein you can have scenarios so with a single remote you can control everything in the house and again that is an industrial setup so wherein you have pressure gauges environmental monitoring high voltage monitoring ac monitoring you know tank level monitoring and control all those things similarly uh, this is for a home now for city level implementation of zigbee you need repeaters also because naturally you need power boosters so that setup i will show there is one city in scandinavia called gotever that is called the zigbee city they have all metering water as well as power based on zigbee nodes again home control there is one company control for which develops such products you can have a single remote for everything in home patient monitoring that will have an ip interface with the controller through protocol and other hospitals will be connected to it this is again a very useful application Va commercial lighting control as we see now these are marriage day, these are transition days nowadays the days are longer but usually you will see in each and every city in our country that in the morning street lights are on up to very late in the evening they are opened up early when they are not required because they have a standard time frame and uh, during the uh, that changes but this particular one period is they always they are wherein uh, their schedules or schedules don't change but the daylight timing changes but with this type of solutions you can have these things 
automated. Now this is what we were talking about about the home lighting or switches. You have to design and install. Then maintenance is very easy because hotel energy management is already being done with keys which are but those are mechanical switches basically. So with Zigbee you can have wireless control. Then advanced metering platforms, wherein you have integrated metering for all the things, power, gas, water within the house. Now they are trying to use the mobile handset as a gateway to control the Zigbee co coordinator and other things through IP and other technology. These are some of the Zigbee products which are available in India. Uh, we only have kits right now. Plus, uh, development kits are available from Zenic and other company Next Gen, Next Gen, and uh, you can work on it. But as such, commercial products, Godrej has come in, but they have developed their own protocol based on 802.15.4. They are not using Zigbee. They have developed their own customized protocol. So this I was talking about. This one city called. Gutenberg in Scandinavia. It has around five lakh citizens. There are around two lakh sixty thousand meters, out of which forty two thousand are indoor. One lakh eighty thousand meters are in metering rooms, and there are, there is also a rural area around which has around fifteen thousand metering points. So. Uh, this is how the entire city is connected through concentrators, meters, and repeaters. Now, this is one thing which we can visualize for future that how Zigbee will change your home. The moment you open up with a wireless key, even with the profile of the person entering home, if the kid is entering, the TV knows that the kid is coming. So the TV channel will be cartoon. And if a lady comes in, soap opera. And if a male comes in, news channel. So, and then the lighting will be controlled. Your smart sensors will be ready. And all those things. You can have sprinklers and all those things. Let I get so high. <clears throat> Meet and greet, sensible sensors, climate control, you can have safer spaces, no hazard lighting and a smart sprinkler. However, uh, from the behavioral point of view, how much these things will help? Yesterday I was seeing one commercial in which uh, office come house concept is coming up in Chandigarh itself, where in the same studio apartment, Previously, studios were thought of in a different part in the same building. There was a studio apartment, but downstairs there is your office. That was the concept how it started. But nowadays, housing has come in, wherein a single room studio apartment is convertible into office in the day. In the daytime, in the night, it becomes your bedroom. So those things have become reality. Sensor interface has also become a reality with these things. However, that will make your life more mechanical. So behavioral part, you have to see. These are various references. Thank you. Uh, if you have interest, we can discuss a bit of the lunch time any questions in this regard so that means at least we should be having one node and one coordinator yes yes even even coordinate you can have single thing also the coordinator is able to house sensors you can have kids right now so kids are coming uh, which 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 have uh, on uh, the coordinator also have on chip sensors 
so you, you if if your application or utility is very small you can have uh, everything on the coordinator also the coordinator can also house sensors okay, and coordinator should be having a different sensor for if you want remote. bridging with remote things you need uh, that thing so there is one protocol with zigbee called 6low pan which provides you bridge between the ip and the zigbee